It's uh, Breakfast of the Masters. It is the 27th of February. Today is my 32nd anniversary. Hang on one second. Listen to this. Sorry, I forgot to do that before we started. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I was just looking at the day going, hey, I know what this day is. Anyway, um, dinner out tonight, I, you know what, we're so busy, we just, we can't. I appreciate the thoughts, guys. No, I don't want to screw this one up, but we, we can't go to dinner tonight. we got to be in travel tomorrow to hear Lucy play um, in a, a competition. Um, and we were at another concert last night, so anyway, you lose points for every minute past cracking your eyes open, you know. <laughs> no, I think in our house, if you just say it first, you're good. So anyway, um, what did I start to say? Okay, so I want to continue uh, what we were doing the last three or four sessions. Oh, uh, all right, Aaron's got a question. Quick question about median lines and confluence. You said same slope median lines are not additive. Are lines of maximum excursion and median lines of similar slopes additive? It was the basis of the Nexus last class. Yeah, um, lines of median exc uh, maximum excursion um, think of it this way, Aaron. All, in, all signs point to the same area. So I don't know if you want to call that additive or not. All signs point to the same area. Because some lines of maximum excursion, of course, are the AC of a sloped median line. But other lines of maximum excursion are just sloped lines that carry the frequency of a swing. Okay? And, and oftentimes those frequencies will give you timing and or distance so if you have one that's giving that's showing you timing and or distance and then it also coincides with um, a median line or a lower or upper parallel where price should run out of energy both are telling you where price are running out of energy that makes sense so it's the timing of the li of the line of max that that we care about more than the a median line very seldom gives you timing except for where price touches it. But sometimes these slope lines can just just absolutely nail, nail it. In fact, watch today. Um, I think the additive part you mentioned was only pertaining to the 43% probability of reverse or acceleration. Is that right? Well, yeah. Um, well, when we talk about energy points, Ouija, so Ouija is saying, what I said the other day was that um, um, it just points that we're going from 80 to 43 percent. The other thing is, though, energy points are never made up of lines with the same slope, meaning positive slope or negative slope. They're always lines of opposing slope, right? That doesn't mean you it doesn't mean you can't be in a nexus area but it's not an energy point. Um, and you're going to see as we go further and further and closer and closer to September, um, which is the target to get to, well, I'm not going to say that word, but you can think about it. We're going to be moving toward a specific point in the market. The probability is still 43% despite the confluence of similar slope media lines. There, that's what I thought. Yes. As you come down to a median line, we'd go from 80% to 43%. I don't care if you have three median lines, or if you have two median lines and a line of maximum excursion, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you've got it, Scotty. I'm just not going to say it out loud. But we're going to be working from the first concept was nexus. The next one was energy points. We're reworking nexus. 
but then we're going to be working as I push you most of you farther to the right and now actually in mentoring I have a couple people that I need to maybe push nudge a little bit actually sorry farther to the left and you now I've got a couple people I need to mud nudge just tiny bit to the left but we'll all get in the same place eventually trust me um, it's nice to have people it, it's nice that I have a, a fair amount of people in mentoring and breakfast of the master because then I can tell whether or not I'm getting across what I'm trying to and I can also see the message that needs to come next so today we're going to follow on the discussion we're also going to talk about something um, I had three mentorings this week and one one thing is obvious we need to transition or add another topic now that we've got we started the topic of being in the right place okay make sense Can anybody tell me if you're sitting down to trade one second chain if you're sitting down to trade there's three parts to a trade you know what they are And while you while you think about that, um, I'll rechange the question. You highlighted um, this with a student's homework a few weeks ago as he was trying to buy the confluence of two downsloping lines of maximum excursion. They don't have any synergy or are not cumulative. Yeah, that is correct. Um, it's not risk, stop, and target. It's the entry, money management, end game. Thank you. That's perfect, Keith. Entry, money management, end game. Or think about it this way: entry, middle, end. Right, entry beginning middle end is fine too, Peter. That's perfect. And repeatable pattern that turns into opportunity, but then you have to manage it, and then you have, then there's an end. Okay. All different ways to think about it, but the same thing. Okay, so we've been talking about the opportunity, right? And I will proudly say this. Um, I had a student that had a, I'll say it this way, he had a shitty year last year. He had a tough year. He stepped up to the plate, came to market geometry, finding his way around, started mentoring. Now he's in mentoring, doing his homework. Dead balls on. I mean, but tell him to do 50 charts, he does 75. Doing his homework, working hard showed up uh, this middle of this week had um, four trades this month and I t and I wasn't I was not lying when I told when I said this to him the entries on his first three trades I could ra I could randomly go through my trading and find three entries in a row and I don't think I could find three more surgical entries I mean that's pretty good in terms of finding the opportunity and taking advantage of the opportunity I don't think I could audit my trades and say okay here's three that are as good as that or better so that's pretty good and that made me feel darn good and he's he's not he's got a ways to go but that tells me the power of doing you know breakfast and mentoring together really makes a difference with a stellar risk reward setup or just super close to the bone um, his risk reward was great and and I mean his entries are exactly what we're looking at this week I think he's really patient for trades a month and mostly surgical um, no not mostly surgical period now he and several other people this week point their work pointed out that you know the middle and end game needs to be tightened up so we'll talk about that today i'm so trading too much as peter average two per day um well depends on the trades peter but you will you will find i'm going to ask pat and bj um and they've they've been they've been through the ringer here with me 
for for quite a while they took two 12 week sessions of mentoring two 12 session blocks of mentoring um, and now they've been in breakfast with the master their, their trading has really gone parabolic how many trades do you think you average a week Pat? just guess I mean it doesn't have to be only three or four a month can be A week? Is that a week, Pat? So, Pat, BJ and Pat, are, they, they're making it. I mean, you know, if they, if they wanted to go out and get capital, I would take them to a prop room guy, and, and they would probably get capital. Um, so, BJ and Pat say in the last two weeks, about seven a week. So, that's not as far off as you think, Peter. But... If they're not quality trades, you are trading too much. Amanda says four a week. Um, you know what? We'll, let's let's grill Pat and BJ another time. <laughs> How about that? I'm gonna stop asking some questions, All right, but I do appre I appreciate letting me uh, you letting me use you as an example and ask you questions. But let's uh, we got we have a lot to do today. So, All right. so. We need to understand motion. No, I'm recording. Thank you for asking. Um, we need to understand motion for two reasons. First of all, it's going to get us in the right area and look for the opportunity in that area, right? But let's say that you catch the opportunity correct. If you have no idea where you're going, what's your plan? Just make it up as you go along? You've grabbed the, the whale by the tail. Now what? The whale starts to swim. Do you have a plan? What is the plan? Does the plan make any sense? A lot of trades, um, I'm working on an article right now. If you nailed that entry three or four times in a row, and you end up taking a total of 35 pips for the week for that period do you think that makes you, first of all does that make you feel very good second of all do you think that was very successful well you wouldn't plan for that would you Matt, Matt says if that's what I was planning for. Four trades, total of 35 pips or 40 pips. I can't imagine a scenario where you would plan to harvest a total of 40 pips with four. Yeah, you wouldn't be happy with that. I mean, is it? are they winning trades? Sure, but feel like hard work went down the drain. Yeah. Key says extremely disappointed. I, that's how I would feel. I would feel like, God damn. And I looking back, and I, I nailed these. I don't have any money to show for it. Well, the answer is, did you plan? And if you did plan, did you, did you plan for something that made sense, which is understanding motion? Okay. So we're going to talk, A, about opportunity, and then, B, we're going to be more precise about, okay, if you get, if you happen to catch the whale, as he swims through this opportunity and grabs the tail. What are you looking for? What makes sense? Because there are targets, there are high probability targets, there are, there are any old targets I should say. I'm long at um, 
115 into Canada and I'd like to get out at 128. Well, you know what? I'm long at 115 and I'd like to get out at 245. But is that realistic? Might be, but is it? Better have, you know, a good reason. Um, I have a a maximum target, and I'm going to lock profit, you know, box profits in underneath. Okay, that's fine. Can anybody tell me what can go wrong there? No structure to hide behind. What if, yeah, what if you, well, and you might get stopped up, but what, what if it just goes straight up? Stop, and you end up with a stop a long ways away from the current price, yeah. What if you end up, you know, going to break even, and things, you know, up $2,000 a contract, it comes all the way out and stops you out because there was no structure. How, how is, how's that work for you? How would you feel about that? So do you think about those things? We've talked about them. Do you well, okay, so BJ and Pat say sure. Okay. So you've been you've been spanked by them just recently. Okay. Maceo says not consistently. Okay, in honest I in honesty, I concentrate on entry. Well, that's what everybody is, John. That's the problem, is entry is everything for almost everybody. But entry's fine, but if you don't have a middle and end game, you're playing with dynamite. Amanda says, I'm always thinking about how I can manage the trade better. Okay. Scotty says, it happened to me this week. I was up 3 to 1 and had a break-even stop after price went vertical. Okay. You might, I mean... I don't know where it happens, but there's some amount of money. I don't want people to just put in three to one targets ever. Okay, that's not that doesn't work. But if you if price goes vertical, there should be some amount of money or some amount of x to one, two to one, three to one, four to one, whatever, where you say, okay, you know what? I'm putting a profit floor under this. And if it backs up, I'm only willing to give back X, period. And I'm, I'm talking about when there's no structure, okay? And it's a wonderful thing when things go up vertically, okay? But I will tell you, 80% of the time, if you have a logical profit target, you actually, when price goes vertical like that, you will actually hit your profit target about 80% of the time. Can anybody give me an example of what a, a logical profit target would be that would get hit 80% of the time? Yeah, median line. Double the range, sure. Upper median line, sure. Those are all high probability. Scotty says my trade was this week. Double the range was hit. Okay, great. I think the issue with this is also also not adapting. Sure. Oh, so Scotty says um, <clears throat> double the range was hit, but he was going for the median line. Okay. So now I'm not too worried if you're talking about you're up two and a half or three to one and it and it pulls back. Okay. But part of the problem is. We're looking for, you know, airy fairy targets that don't make sense. And a lot of you, not everybody here, but a lot of you are still trying to become consistently profitable, right? So a simple answer is if you're trying to be consistently profitable, if you can find your way into the market, you need to be able to find, because we're talking about a high probability entry. Isn't that what we're looking for? Okay, we want a high probability exit as well. 
not a get me rich exit a high probability exit okay at this point you shouldn't be worried that you suck out every juicy morsel of the trade at this point you should be worried about okay what place if I get in what place is likely to be hit and meets at least my three to one criteria so again list for me high probability targets go ahead logical targets but high probability logical targets double the range sure a median line up above or an upper parallel sure what else average swing length that's a good one what else major tops or bottoms how about that yeah structure all right so if you have let's say your let's say your median line is nine to one away you with me we find an opportunity and our median line is nine to one away that's a lot but we've got a prior high at four and a half to one We've got a prior swing it right in front of us at four and a half to one. What's your logical profit target? If you're just trying to, you're just, you're just gutting out that got to get consistently profitable. What, where do you need to get out? You need to take the four and a half to one. It's the easy money, right? It's a prior swing. That's right. Okay. I, I, even if you can see that, well, if this thing unfolds and it goes to the median line, that's 9 to 1. Okay, that's fine. But what you need to do is book about 30 or 40 of those 3.5, 4.5, 5 to 1s, even though you can see the bigger swings. Even if you consistently see that it's making the run X amount of times to the higher target, you need to book the high probability exits because it's going to change the way you think about your trading you're going to realize you know what my trading is working now, i don't want to brand anybody but here's the truth most of you are still in the back of your mind doubting yourself and thinking you know what i'm not a winning trader i think i can be but right now i'm not i'm not cutting it okay that only changes by becoming a winner stop reading my mind it only changes by becoming a winner and and winning more and winning more and winning more we can always learn to stretch targets but first we need to get in get out nobody gets hurt okay we need to stop having four and a half or five to one right in front of us and it's by the way and it's at a logical target but we're we've got our eyes on the nine to one target and it might go there but if it's at that high probability target we need to lock and load take our money walk away if somebody else makes the nine to one that's fine first we need to get in the habit of setting up high probability entries and high probability exits taking our money we can then alter that if we want to the honest truth is let's think about this if I can get you to 40 45 percent probability and you're averaging three and a half four and a half to one risk rewards do you need to do anything else no you're done I know it feels much cooler when you get those you know 10 to 1s, 11 to 1s, 15 to 1s, but in honest truth, if you add up all the trades at the year, during the year, the pile that has the 3.5, and 4.5, and, and 5 to 1 trades, the profits from that is going to dwarf those monster trades that you end up making. Okay? That's a, a fallacy is that those big trades are going to make your winning year. And in fact, I said to somebody yesterday, and this is the truth, you know, I still, I still, do this with the NFA. I look at 10,000 blank accounts over the summer 
that have gone busted. We do this forensic stuff, and one of the one of the things is absolutely true is you can tell somebody even if somebody's winning, you can tell they're in trouble when one or two trades make their month or year. Did you hear me? Let's say you have a monster year, and one of them is just a monster freaking trade. That's real. You're, you're on thin ice, okay? Because if you pull out that trade, you're a loser, aren't you? Yeah, you're living on the outlier, okay? And the outlier is not going to show up enough. It's false information, exactly right. So we want to concentrate on the 80% of your trades that are going to make you a living. That doesn't mean don't, I'm, I'm not telling you not to take the money if you fall into a 10 to 1 or a 15 to 1. Be damn happy. Go out to dinner, okay? But don't don't live for those. That's not going to work, okay? All right, so let's look at a trade. This trade has a conundrum in it. Let's not look at that. All right, so this is, it's gold, 880 tick gold. And um, we can see We're, we're trading lower, and we got a nice pullback, and we're leaving lower highs and lower lows. And I'm doing this pre-trade, just trying to get into the rhythm, okay? Come down and test the lows, break the lows. consolidate at the lows and then extend okay and extend and we get a head stander makes a low closes on its high pull back we've got our advanced multi pivot line out there volatility slows down we range a little bit and pull out And now we're accelerating to the upside. Okay, we leave a lower high, pull back, and now we're in a coil. Take a look at the screen. We want to get to an opportunity. Does that make sense? Tell me what you see. Okay, John says expanding three drives. Anybody else? This swing looks like the swing above until we get a higher low. Okay. Cascade down with last pullback being the largest. Okay. Um, 11.97 might have been washed. Okay. I see a V and I see swing pulling into another. I don't know what that means. Peter sounds like midday talk. The greatest move up. Ah, Scotty. The largest move up, the largest rally. It looks different to me. Okay. Is it rounding out at the bottom? Well, I'm asking you the question. You don't get to ask me the question. Um, I see pain and buy stops getting run on the final run down. Okay. Um, I don't. I'm not. I'm not going to do um, counts, Thomas. But I get. Your, I see what you're saying. Um, flowering, largest pendulum swing pullback. Okay. Slope of highs decreasing. Okay. Draw those real close for you. Real fast for you. Slope. 
increasing. See it? We'll leave that alone. But here's where it becomes marked. <coughs> and if this is, <coughs> this seems like a high. So, okay, now things look a little bit different, don't they? A large rally, interesting to see if last high can be taken out and will be the first in this run down. Price to the downside appears to be decelerating. It's moved more to the right and less to the downside. Okay. Um, it also looks like the spirals on the downside are increasing. Yep, Scotty, so... Uh, hmm. I guess I started this and didn't finish it, but I know... I. So, I don't know if you guys have ever do this, but let's look at these swings. So, one of the things we're going to do on those, if for anybody that comes to those first two days, we're going to A, talk about We're going to have class just like we're sitting in Andrew's living room. But also, we're going to spend a lot of time drawing from blank charts. You can provide, you guys can pick the chart, and then we're going to draw together, bar by bar, so that you know I've never seen the chart. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't seen the chart. The entire group, we're going to observe what's going on, and as you make observations, I'll react to them. If you guys miss something, I will point them out, but the idea is, what are you looking at? Why are you looking at it? What does it mean? All right. So, now that I've drawn out the swings, I could do this. Now that I've drawn out the swings... Isn't the downside vertical and the upside decelerating? All right, so let's look at the downside. Now that I've drawn out the swings, well, actually, in point of fact, we can just, oh, that's too bad. So the downside is fairly constant, but the upside is doing what? I see a vertical down move that's failed to follow through. I also see a pullback and a cascade down. Okay. Can you see that the swings are in increasing? Both the up legs and the down legs, each one is getting larger. And the the slope is def sorry the slope is definitely flattening but we can see a pattern to these swings right so the spiral space is getting bigger yes now remember what i said trumpet looking okay now remember what i said as spirals increase at some point what happens Tim, when you say the slope is definitely flattened, can you please show where you're looking? Sure. Robbie, take a look. As I connect these tops, you can see that we're going at this speed. Now we're going slower, and now we're going even slower. Yeah, okay, they find they they lose gravity, and then they break apart. And then they'll try and find a new orbit, right? So... The spiral, at some point, no longer, there is a point where it can't hold together, and I guess my lines are not, not working very well, but anyway. So, all right, so we're coming down, and we can see that this, this is a perfect example of the spiral increasing. The tops are flattening, but the bottoms are steepening. I, 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 would, I would 
Yes, it's deepening a little, but from here on down, it's constant. And the question now is, if we swing, how about this? Listen to this next, quote, next comment. If we swing up any farther than here, will this thing have the gravity to hold the spiral together? Or, if gravity lets go, what has happened? Paul says, as patterns continue, a top will overtake a prior high. Okay, if that happens, what's, what's just happened? Price has turned. New spiral, right? Or at least a change in the spiral. Or maybe horizontal, right? But it's different. Yeah, if you want to say trend's broken, that's fine. You're not going to hear me use the word trend very much. Just because it's overused, but... Okay, so when you normally look at at price at a chart like this are you seeing this if you're not slow down and draw never before okay well okay good then we're learning something slow down put in these swings and then if you have ensign you hit B the bars go away and you can look at it and go it's very obvious. I mean, if you if even if you can't do it, draw them with big fat lines, then you can actually eye them up and say, you know what, the down swings are getting better, bigger, and the up swings are getting bigger too. Well, okay, that's the spiral increasing. And then the question is, as this thing, this one, this particular one is flattening out. As it flattens out, if this continues, let's let's follow it out to its next logical move. I drew the backwards, that's sorry. So let's say that this is the run the run up. We won't we won't know until it turns back down, but let's say that this is the run up. What the heck? Let's say that this is the run up, okay? We know that it's bigger. Significantly larger. But they've all been significantly larger. They get larger and larger and larger, okay? Now, we get some sort of pullback. We don't know what that's going to be yet. And maybe it's here. Maybe it's all the way to here. But if this holds true, this is smaller than this so this is larger than this this is larger than this this is larger than this what does this next swing look like remember it's Newton's law an object in motion stays in motion these are actually the swings of a pendulum okay so if this object is in motion and it continues that also I know this seems like back and forth motion but it's also same thing is true. An object in motion means this swing is big, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's an object in motion. It's not a range. Anybody else got a guess? If this logic holds, what's the next swing look like? I'll even do that. Like, oh, I like that. Shane says, bigger, like Russian nesting dolls. I'm watching the movie Nikita this morning before I came in, so that's very ap apropos, so to speak. Okay, so, oh, come on. Oh, there's no way for me to do it, but I would expect that, right? See that? If the pattern holds. All right. So let's see. Let's go back and see what actually happens. So we get in a coil, and we're noticing that we're in a spiral 
our speed is constant to the downside but the upside is decelerating so our spiral is opening up if you will to this side the swings are getting larger and larger and that clues us to one thing we have yet to break a swing all the way down isn't that correct If this trend continues, unless we make a significant new low, we are going to take out this swing. Can you see that? Just by the nature of these swings, taking out this swing and maybe even this swing is just, it's a no-brainer now that you see this. Unless we head way down here, the length of this next swing is going to be bigger. It's going to bust this area. Or the pattern is going to change. But it makes more sense to believe in what you see and assume that things are going to stay. Things are what they are until they do change. They will eventually change, but they don't change until they change. All right, so let's see what happens to this. Does everybody follow where I'm going here? Okay. Hey, David, how are you? As the swings get larger, then they will require more energy to break them. Um... Okay, let me say it to you this way, Shane. As we as the swings get larger, as we get out into this area, gravity is is centered. And let me explain it to you. Action, reaction. Action, reaction action reaction here's the balance action reaction here's the balance right as we get to these extremes both down here and up here we've gone from a great deal of gravity to an extreme and at some point and, and gravity gets stretched out further and further and further and at some point it will get to the point where gravity will get broken if the slope was not decreasing, is it safe to assume the next thing would have been bigger? The slope was not decreasing. It's because the slope is decreasing that we can assume that this next one will be bigger, Peter. It's because the slope is decreasing that we can assume the next one will be bigger. Sorry, I mean, I meant the energy required to break and make a new low. Okay. All right, so let's follow it out and see if this answers some of, some of the questions. Slope of the centers is also decreasing. Yeah, you can, that's another thing you can do. You can just put in the center lines here and then connect them. Why not? can't remember doing that in my charting but it's a, a very easy and elegant exercise it will help you with the direction of the market or maybe maybe you won't let's take a look at that maybe it's not as clear as I thought it would be so we I pretty well eyeball the center we'll see if I did a good job I don't know it's, it shows that generally, it, I didn't think it would be as, I thought it would be a more stark picture. I thought it would be, it would it's much more clearly show that we were gentling. And instead, because the bottom is constant, um, it's subtle, but you can see that the slope is slowing down. It's probably obvious, but why would we consider the tops as the slope that tells up tells up the direction of price and not the bottoms or is it dependent on the direction of the price well, we're looking at both Robbie the, the bottom is constant 
but the top is up okay there's something going on here each swing both the up and down swing is getting larger okay and where is the pressure the pressure is to the upside does that help Robbie the pressure is not it's not equidistant the pressure is to the upside <coughs> I think the bottom is getting steeper to the downside I think you should look again it did until here and now it's constant Line, the line doesn't law doesn't lie sorry difficulty is that's is that sometimes the gentling equals sustainable and sometimes the opposite is true um, okay the gentling yes but not the larger and larger and larger swings because as the swings get further and further away from their center of gravity gravity gets thinner and thinner and thinner to the point where it just breaks Okay, it's like, I don't want to get too much into physics. It only has so much pull. It's like a rubber band. If you stretch it far enough, it's going to break. Okay, each time we're getting to an extreme and get pulled back. And then we get to an extreme and then get pulled back. And get to an extreme and get pulled back. And work to an extreme and get pulled back. Work to an extreme... Now we'll see where we get pulled back to. And believe me, this is going to tie into what we've been talking about the last three or four sessions. So I've drawn out the, you know, the what if, a bigger downside. If this pattern holds, we should see a bigger swing to the downside and then an even bigger swing to the upside, right? All right, so this is the first time we busted a swing. And I said bigger slope to the downside, bigger slope to the upside. So this pattern is actually not happening. So now we've taken out two swings. What have we left? A higher low. And so the way to think about this is it reached out it couldn't get back to balance and as it swings back into this area it's lost touch with gravity it's unable to get pulled back to balance and it's flung out into space and now we'll see how much energy the only limiting factor here is how much energy does it have because you know it can't go vertical forever so it's going to run out of energy at this point does every, anybody have any idea at all where this thing is going we're we going to new highs we're we going to new lows Anybody have an opinion? I'm with Al. I'm with Keith. I'm with Paul. And I've got some people that have some opinions. And go ahead. Leaving that higher low is like a failure price to make a bigger move down. Like it was doing the pressure on the highs. One, we're going higher in a new spiral. So Scotty, okay, elegant answer. Matt Cube says we have a change of behavior and that's it at this point. Okay, so I'm with um, again people I said and pretty much I think I think with Matt Cube here, which is okay. I see something new, but I don't know where this is leading. I just know it's looking for a high, but we're eroding the left of the controlling swing. Okay, I'll take that. It's good. Do you have any tendency that? you look for regarding verticality strength in terms of energy and distance when coming out of a move a more V like uh, versus a larger energy coil no nope, I don't would you see those as two swings are one well that is a possibility Matt cubed which is after the fact you might 
wherever this ends up, you might just do this. And say, okay, this wasn't the terminus of the swing because we didn't get back to center. This was, because you can see this one come up and pull back, right? This was the end of the swing. That's a possibility, okay? But it's a new slice since you said the spiral should continue to expand on both sides. Well, it's definitely changed the nature of the spiral no matter what happens at this point, right? Even if this is the, a bigger swing, the spiral has changed. At this stage, would you add a pane of glass and disregard the lower highs on the left? Um, at this point, John, I'm not in the in the business or focused on this swing higher, this swing higher, this swing higher. I've already admitted that I have no idea where this is going. So, in answer to this question, in answer to your question. I know the controlling swing is being eroded. I don't care. You can put in the pane of glass if you want. It is a very interesting question. But here's my answer, John. I don't know. So I don't, I'm no longer, I'm not paying attention to the left because I don't really have an, how about this? I've foretold just by observing that we are going to get bigger swings. But when this swing happens, it doesn't give me any directional answer. Does that help you, John? I don't know enough now about what's about to happen to be interested in these swings any longer. They, they've they served their purpose. They showed me that they're getting larger and larger. Now I get this. Okay, well that that's nice, but it didn't really help me. Because I can't imagine, let's think about this. In the next seven bars, can you imagine an opportunity to trade? Anyone? I can't. So, if there, if I can't imagine an opportunity, there's not much I can do with this at this point, right? We're getting extensions, so we're moving more two-sided. So, yeah. So, at this point, I mean, the logic worked. And I'm not disheartened because I don't have an opportunity. But I'm back in observation mode because I have to now connect this set of logic with what's just what's starting to unfold but I don't know what's unfolding I'm I'm in the dark here at the moment and don't be afraid to admit that go okay this is new but it's not what I was expecting okay so what do we get another tight coil okay I mean, and if you want, you can do that. But you're getting to the point now where by drawing like this, all you're doing is trying to curve fit these swing, this swing to these swings. And the truth is, once this happened, They're no longer really connected, are they? We're somewhere else. It's a new chapter. That's exactly right. So I would say that's the end of this pattern of swings. And it pointed to this. It's a v, It ended up being a V bottom at the moment, not a horizontal with an opportunity. So it's just not an opportunity. And now something new is going on. Does that make sense? So you may not know what it is, but that's where your mind should be. Okay, well, huh. All right. I got so in that in that case I've got two interesting areas. This top, this bottom, and I know I'm making a new controlling swing, but that's all uh, those are the interesting points that I have. This game about Bigger and bigger swings no longer matters because we're in a different set of swings. So we can observe them. And what do we see? All right, so we start to turn. 
I get a swing that looks meaningful. So I'm just going to mark it out. And we turn. And I'm going to mark the swing. Um, you can think about the higher low if you want. I don't know. I mean, we've already left one higher low. Is this a second higher low? Is that the pattern? This is what you should be asking, Robbie. Is that the pattern? Low, higher low. Do you want to trade here, Robbie? That's what you should be asking yourself. Is this an opportunity? The last four swings, one down, two up, and one down, all look at similar in size. Okay, and similar in size doesn't doesn't do much for me. Robbie says, I don't want to trade here. I wonder if we will move down with an expanding spiral again, says Aaron. Okay, let's keep that in mind, Aaron. Ready? So we've seen our one peak here. And Aaron's got a hypothesis. He's not going to know whether or not it's going to work, but he's... He's starting to build some logic. Amanda says, are we heading down to form C? So Amanda's got a hypothesis. Are we going to pull back and form a C? And if we are forming a C, then what do you have, Amanda? Besides a median line. If you get into an area that's forming a C, what do you actually have? Come on. Opportunity. Not bottom, opportunity. Right? Maybe not an entry, but an opportunity. Okay, so we've got a couple hypotheses out there. If Let's, let's see what plays out. So we marked, if we're considering the C at the pullback, then what would stop us considering the C at the higher low? Uh, Robbie, I'm not considering anything. Somebody else mentioned a C. I'm not considering anything. If you want to tell me that you see a C and an opportunity, let me know. I already asked you if you wanted to trade here, and you said no. So that means you don't consider this to be a C. Right? Does this look like a C to you? If it does, then you should be doing this. David says, no, I don't. John says, could be a strong reaction. Is there anybody that thinks that, 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 that we've seen C? Matt says, no, and that doesn't do anything for me anyway. Not enough logic for me to be a C. It is possible, says Scott. Okay, it's always possible, yes. Well, what's the reason to rule it out? Robbie, I just, I'll, I'll give it to you. It's always possible. I asked you if it looks like it. I thought C was at 12.10 for a short. Okay, so Shane says, what, you know, what about a short here? Okay, well, that's a possibility as well, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. The problem is, there's no opportunity there. Okay, so I'll leave that up for you, Ouija. Ouija and Shane want that median line. Okay, good. I'll leave that up. I'm fine with that. I don't know if, does that give you an opportunity? Maybe. So we've got somebody looking at a C here. We got somebody looking at a C here. Use the A on the first move. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going to draw all over the place. Okay. I'm going somewhere on purpose. Okay. Otherwise, we'll be here all week. Actually, I'll tell you what. I'm going to stick with what I just said. You're stuck with what I what I drew. I want you to focus on what I'm on what I'm drawing for a reason. Okay? I know you have thoughts of this is this and this is this and this is this. There's a reason I'm drawing what I'm drawing, okay? So sorry, tough love. 
look at what I'm drawing, focus on what I'm drawing. I'm looking at the length of this swing. I'm looking at the first pullback. Do you see it? Does everybody see that? Okay. I put in a line of maximum excursion. I don't know why this is blue, but I put a line of maximum excursion off of the first pullback. Now I want to know what the next swing looks like. Okay, that's the next swing. Anybody notice anything? Okay, the downside leg is smaller. Okay, we don't know if it's, we can't say that it's less steep or accelerate. We can't say it's accelerated or decelerated because we only have one measurement, right? You guys are ahead of yourself. I can only measure, in three dimensions, I can only measure speed. And then if I get another slope, I can then measure again. Then I can compare the two. That's like being in four dimensions, which is the derivative of speed, which is, of course, whether we're accelerating or decelerating, okay? Do you understand? Uh, I, I'm not going to compare the tops to the bottoms in terms of speed. No, I'm not going to compare it to the line above. There's The speed of this, which is the tops, has nothing to do with the speed of this, which is the bottom. And Aaron says, right, this spiral might narrow instead of going wider, okay? The speed of this has nothing to do with the speed of this. I can only compare, we're in three dimensions, I can only compare another top to a top, which is the derivative of these two. So this is speed, this would be speed. I can compare the two to get the derivative, which is acceleration or deceleration. Are we not forming a mountain? That's a good question, Peter. I don't know the answer, but it's a good question. Okay? So, as it pulls back, you might ask yourself, if we form a mountain, what would be the logical question, uh, finish to that question, Peter? If we form a mountain, Shane, you're one step too far ahead. Well, okay, I'll give you that. Key says, will the base hold? And if it does, but then what? We're next, but there's a, the more, a much more important question. We've been talking about it for four sessions. Yeah, Aaron's got it. Is there an opportunity? Will it provide an opportunity? Right? Hi, Carlos. How you doing? And Carlos says, you know, at first, at first blush, when we first get down to the base, there is no stop. We know that, right? Until the base is filled, there's no stop. Unless we have sitting, something sitting underneath it. We have nothing sitting underneath us. Okay, so we can imagine, Peter's imagining that maybe we're going to fill the mountain. Okay, then the next question is, will there be an opportunity if it's filled? And that takes some specific things. But let's see if we fill it. And let's see what other observations we can make on the way if we do. Okay. So now we're swinging up. Okay. So we break through our line of maximum excursion. That immediately tells us something right away. Anybody tell me what that is? Upside deceleration. Thank you, Ouija. The upside, okay, is decelerating. Now, we don't know about the downside yet, but we know that the upside is decelerating. That also means
we've got a bigger swing to the upside the second time around. Okay? That's what caused the deceleration, right? So smaller swings down, well, smaller swings down. Well, yeah, we. I was going to say we can't compare that, but we can actually because we have to, right? So let's take a look. So here we go. So yeah, we have a smaller swing to the downside. Where can I do it that's clearer? Yeah, smaller swing to the downside, bigger swings to the upside. Okay, thus far, right? So let's let's see what that gives us. So we've got deceleration up above. We turn and we're making a swing to the downside. Now, if the logic holds and this swing is bigger than this swing, what what can we say, what can we expect about this swing if the logic holds? Even bigger, right. Okay, so you can see it's significantly bigger. Yeah? So the logic has held and okay, somebody says these last four bars are violent. Okay, let's open this up. So we've got relentless selling as we come down and test this low, and my guess is people are starting to get a feel for the rhythm. Anybody that was trying to pick bottoms is getting stopped out, and people are selling the new low, right? Never expected this outcome if it went back, if I went back 20 bars or so. Okay, um, let me bury, it's not what I want to bury, I want to bury the, I guess we'll have to stay here. Oh, so we filled the mountain. Okay, so three people have now said the last swing and the first swing look like similar length. Okay, starting to look like the pattern that we just came out of that took out the first high. Okay, I don't want to look too much to the left. I want to pay attention to this. Since we're making, we're reaching hard, you can see the, again, the velocity is constant on the downside. See it? Three drives to the mountain. Thank you, Shane. If we have a stop below this next pivot. Um, so if we get a larger swing up and then a weaker swing low, is that an opportunity if we get a stop below the next pivot? Okay, that's a that's a that's a good image you're forming in your mind, and that will be the question. All right. So the mountain is filled, and we leave a poke below. See it? Now I get to do the, you know, you know, Shane's favorite thing in the world. Get to play with the crayons. This is why we call it crayon drawing. For those that you are relatively new here. So this is the mountain now. Um, and the math behind this, or the physics behind this, is that nature abhors voids or empty spaces. If you got an indent in the ground, it's going to fill up with water or eventually with dirt or dust. I mean, unless it's the size and even the size of the Grand Canyon, the Grand Canyon's actually filling up. Okay, this is structure. Everybody get that? Now we can't use it here, but now this whole thing is structure. This whole big gawky looking thing. That's why we call it a mountain. It's big, it's connected, we've got a base, etc. You with me? Questions? I get nervous when nobody answers since the, you know, the last, uh, one of the last mentorings I had, the internet just went 
was just gone. So somebody please tell me that you can still hear me. Okay, good. All right. It's structure, but not a structure for stop, right? You mean, no, I don't mean that. I mean, it's structure now, and you can, unlike this, you can't put a stop below this as this is coming down. It's structure. You can put stops below this now if you want. Now, this structure has some baggage. Yep, I'm going to, hang on. This structure has some baggage. So stops under mountains only after they complete. That's true. However, what's the problem with the base of a mountain? It is, it's rock solid, no doubt about it. Okay? That's why we call it the bottom of a mountain and a mountain base. But what is, what is the problem? Not necessarily on this one. And I'll give you a hint by doing this. This one is not an exact fill, so it's less prone to the problem, which is everybody sees it, right? It's a dumbbell line. So, especially when they're double bottoms, people put stops underneath, right? This one's a little better because it's not, it doesn't look like a double bottom. I think it's a stop only if the stops get washed below. Okay, so the question is, did this wash out some stops? And it's less prone to being a problem if it has a slope. But it's always going, it should always be in the back of your mind if you're thinking about using a filled mountain for a stop that there may be other stop loss sellers below this thing. There may be buyers in this area because everybody can connect this line and that might help you. And it's not until it's completed, let me say this again, it's not until the mountain gets completed that the buyers decide that's why it's called a dumbbell line. It's not until this gets completed that the buyers decide, you know what, this is double bottoms. I'll buy in front of these double bottoms and put my stop underneath. So this may slow down any action to the downside. But what, what defines completion? We've got to fill it to the tick. You can't stop here. You can't stop here. We've got to fill it. Oh man, you're going to the Amazon jungle? You know, there's so many of you, I'd like to live your lives. I mean, this is the life I've chosen for myself, but I quit traveling, uh, I think the last big, really, I mean, I do go to London a lot, but the last big exciting thing I did was I was actually at Tiananmen Square when, when all hell broke loose, actually, that night. Uh, the Chinese government took me out of the country because I was there on their dime. But um, that's that was like my last big adventure. And and then we had children, and we and then that's a big adventure. But with Brian Williams, no, <laughs> I was there for the bank, the Bank of China, on their dime. But and then they just whisked me away. Anyway. Um, Okay, or Jorge, you go enjoy yourself. Uh, don't get lost in the Amazon. You can tell us all about it. Um, you're coming in, in, in September, right? I expect pictures. How about that? Okay, go go forth and enjoy the Amazon. Okay, so now, as we come down here, think about it this way. Buy orders, you're getting lots of good luck. Jorge, have a good trip. Oh, he's gone. Okay, so as we come down here and fill the mountain, and leave, if we left a double bottom, at that point, there are buy orders down here. 
all kinds of them because everybody can draw this line. Okay? That makes sense? Always think about Well, I don't want to say this too funny, but if I was a dummy, where would I put my buy order? Now, really, it it needs some excursion to the upside first before people go, oh, you know what, if it gets back down here, I can see the double bottom, so I'm going to get long, right? And again, they're not going to be as attracted to this mountain because it's been poked, right? Just by, by about a dollar. So that's you know that's that's a thousand bucks so but on most mountains as it comes down if it fills and then we get some upside excursion they can immediately see the double bottoms and that they get the dollar signs in their eyes well I'll just buy in this area and I'll put my stop underneath you know 500 bucks underneath and that that should be golden but you, you can see if you played the mini mountain game it didn't work for it at all did it And one reason why it didn't work is because we never got any excursion away. So do you see why we need some excursion away to draw in the buyers? All right. So let's watch this puppy. All right. So we start to get some pullback. Now... This is probably more intuition and talent than teaching opportunity. But I'll put it out there anyway, okay? We more than filled the mountain. But we're forming a leg up. Is it worth spending a stop? Now, you don't, the ATR is two. You don't need to be much bigger than the ATR because if you go at all, very much at all past this low, well, let me finish, Petra. Petra wants to know, is this a high probability entry? Okay. I'm trying to get you into entries that are right at as close as possible to the turn and BJ and Pat says this doesn't work for me okay good it's not probably not going to work for any of you okay it's it's like me watching boom boom I can get like one out of ten and the, is that a high probability hunt for me then if I can get one out of ten I can try, but I might as well, uh, you know, it's worse than just flipping a coin. Okay. But follow the logic here. Okay. The prior low was a violent down, and this current run was 1 2, and it failed to follow through, and it looks like something hard is below the mountain. Okay, so follow the logic. We come down, and we fill the mountain, but can't follow through. And now we're moving to the upside. If we go at all past this low, and by the way, just connecting the slopes gave us timing for the bottom to the tick, right? If we go at all below this low, I'd say three ticks, we're done for. This is going to be, that means we're in another swing down. Can you follow that logic? All right, so now the question is, close your mind to all this, except that you know the mountain's been filled and you're not that worried about extra stops because you've poked, but just forget about repeatable and whether or not you do this. Just see if you could follow it. Just stop asking and just listen. Stop. Open your mind and stop asking questions. I don't expect you to make this trade. 
but I want to expose you to something, okay? Are your minds open? Okay. If we fill the mountain and poke the stops and we're heading back up and you know that if you get two or three ticks past here, I'm going to say three ticks, that means you're now making a new swing lower. So this is happening. There are times where this is an opportunity. And it's the size of the stop and the nature of price has filled this baseline and more, so it ran the stops below. So in a lot of ways the books have been cleaned out. And now it's swinging up. Would you spend a stop? Well, Amanda's got it exactly right. The key is when are those times? And Amanda, the answer is also are you capable of seeing that? And I've already said that this may be linked to intuition and talent. I cannot tell you the answer. So I don't expect people to go forth and make this trade. But let me show it to you anyway, okay? Don't go out and do this, but if you want to just mark it, well, we'll talk about targets in a second. If you want to go out and mark these, and look at them and see if you see them that's fine but don't go out and trade them until you've done a whole lot of homework because it might take talent and intuition but I'll show you anyway okay because it's germane to the discussion that we're having right now which is Keith and I talked about this yesterday in mentoring there's a specific Hang, hang on. There's a specific rhythm involved here with that push down and then the next push down and is that an opportunity? This is like the soy meal entries where the mountain base is washed and then a higher lowest form, says Keith. Okay, put that in the back of your mind. That's a good discussion. This is like the soy meal entries where the, the mountain base is washed and then a higher low is formed. Okay, this one is very close to the wash. Watch it form. And you know if this gets taken out, a new leg is forming and you're wrong. So the question is, do you want to waste the stop? Are you willing to, as I said to Keith, are you willing to put that stop out there and if it gets hit, can you sleep with it at night? And for most of you, the answer is no. For most of you, you'll go to bed thinking, well, that was a stupid waste of one stop or two, in this case, $2,000. With me? All right, so now let's watch. So price makes an excursion up. If you can see that the stops got run, and this is the mountain base, you've got your order in anywhere within the go-no-go, -no -go, and your stop is three ticks below the low. If you're wrong, this swing is about to form. Can you see it? And price is accelerating to the downside. So in essence, it's very easy. Let me let me write it here versus saying it. If you can define the nexus, is it an opportunity? 
So now that you see where I'm defining it, now we'll put all the pieces. Now take a look. So as it swings back down, is this an opportunity? The answer for most of you at this point is you cannot define it fast enough. And you probably can't put parameters around it that define it so that if you're wrong, you're going to be able to sleep at night. It'll, it'll bother you and you'll feel like you made a mistake. Okay? You with me? So you can see what will happen if you're wrong. You can see if you're right. You can see what will happen if you're right. And now you've defined the nexus. Now, somebody said, what's the target? Okay, well, this is where simplicity comes in and where most of you strangle yourself. What if you just go to prior high? That doesn't help me. I'll have to do it again. You're risking 200 to make 1,000. Even if it just is the same size swing. Pretty easy five to one, isn't it, Robbie? Okay, so, but on the fly, as these things unfold, most of you probably can't pull that out. Tim, Timmy says, very nice map to logic out the case for a choice. Never thought of it in that detail other than double bottom, give it a shot, what's one stop. Your way of framing it is more settling. Okay, well, this is, you know, we're going to be doing a bunch of work on framing, both as we get to September and also in the September sessions. And the reason why is because if you could do this on the fly, now that I've laid it out this way, does it seem quite as crazy? Thomas says, I love this trade. Okay, so let's, no, it's a different kind of opportunity we're used to seeing, right. Okay, so, so to summarize this idea, Tim, it's based on the finding a nexus as the confluence of the prior low mountain base with three drives down sloping LME. It's more than that, Robbie. We've also washed the mountain base. So there's less likely to be a lot of lurkers here with stops underneath. They, they're they gone now. Okay, if we stopped horizontal we didn't and all the positions are short or flat at the poke that's right they've been pulled in you said if you can learn to do this on the fly yeah well the problem David is that again this is quick let's take a look at this 10 10 o'clock 10 o3 10 o4 10 o5 your orders have to be in in three minutes Three to four minutes, you, your order has to be in because you're going to be filled. And so can you make a decision this quick? And I don't mean let me just take a punt. I mean can you analyze the nexus? Can you define it and do all the things that I just explained and do it on the fly in three minutes? Is it because the wash wasn't strong, really strong that it shows that the low is more probable to hold? No, 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 no. A stronger wash would be even better. Shane, if we want another dollar, that'd be even better. But a dollar is enough that it's washed all these stops. And that's what we got. We got a dollar wash. If we'd stopped right at the line, which a lot of mountains do, then we got double bottoms, and then everybody's stepping up to the plate. But we've, we've, the people that were interested got washed. I think he tactically would have you considering the entry a bit sooner, wouldn't it? Um... See, 
here's the problem. You can't consider it here. Masao. Because at this point, it's just a mountain fill. And you have no stop. It's not till you get the wash that you can consider it. The way you set this up, I have seen many times on stocks too, so it may work on it. It should work with any instruments, David. It's, this is not, this has nothing to do with gold or anything else. It doesn't have anything to do with time frame either. This could be 20 minutes, it could be dailies. Okay. These, all these things always work in everything and in every time frame and in every instrument. So, um, so BJ said if this had a bigger stop, I'd like it. Okay, fine. I'll give that to you. Ouija says, can I say that the bounce you get will be enough to get you to break even? Um, what I would say back to you, Ouija, ready? If you got in this trade, and if you're trying to become a consistent trader, your target should be where? First prior swing high, right? Get me close to this. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a threat. Get me close to this area, and I'll take my money and walk away. Thank you. Goodbye, Jesus, right? Vertical down, vertical up. Yep, that's what you're expecting. Or this isn't going to work. Okay? So, in terms of will this... Okay, so if you get filled, now we're filled, right? We have a slight problem right here, but this is in the nature of if this holds, we're wrong, right? So that's taken care of. Make sense? If we can't bust this high, we're going to get stopped out. That's the nature of this setup. I'm not trying to teach you this setup. We're going to, we're going to trade over here, but I want you to understand this. Okay, so our next problem is, of course, here. And one thing I want to emphasize is, even though this is an advanced, and probably too advanced for all of you, an advanced entry, if you are capable of seeing it, until you book a bunch of them, this is your profit target. Why is the line of maximum excursion above not a problem? Okay, Aaron... What we consider problems are where other people would put orders. Okay? And 99% of the market thinks horizontally. They're not going to have orders on a slope. Okay? They're going to be here. Right? Okay. So, we come out of the hole. As we come out of the hole, if you don't have the trade on, and you start to expand to the upside, you should be thinking right now, literally, as this bar prints. Are you with me? If you didn't take this trade, and I don't expect any of you to take this trade, you should be saying, is there an opportunity for me somewhere, and where is it? If this pattern breaks, this downside pattern breaks, does that leave an opportunity for me, and what is it? Everybody with me? That's how... F I don't care if you take the trade I just showed you. What I care about is you recognize that this might be a change in behavior, and if it is, we don't know if it is yet, but if it is, what would be an opportunity for me? Okay? Anybody have any questions on that? Okay. So we're swinging higher. We're swinging higher. We're coming out of the hole with a vengeance here, right? Stop. We gather ourselves and swing higher. This is where, at this point, I mean, I don't know that this is the high, and I don't care, because watch this.
Okay, I think something's changed, don't you? We got a higher low and a significantly higher swing to the upside. I think the spiral has changed. Does everybody understand that? If you do understand that, what question should you be asking yourself? Okay, Amanda's got it. Okay, how can I get in? Where is this likely to pull back? Is there an opportunity to come back? Exactly right, okay? So we don't know that this is the high. Let's see what happens. What's the new structure and is it opportunity? There you go. All good ideas. All right. Still going higher. Still going higher. We're at our first problem area. If you manage to get long, walk away. Everybody understand that? Even though this is like the golden entry, you guys are at the point where if you can grab five to one, grab the five to one and walk away. Forget about thinking about 1210. Are you with me? The easy money is right here. And it's five to one. Take the money. All right, let's see what happens. Double tops. Okay, we make a new high, but we close on the low. Do you see that? So, looks like we're going to the sky. We get to the prior high. We close on our high. You're excited. You're doing the happy dance now. I know you are. If you're in. But that bar forms. The party's over. And unfortunately, if you didn't sell on the way up, you will freeze on the way down. 85% of you here will not be able to pull the trigger to get out. At best, you're able to go to break even. And I'm going to tell you, if you've got 5 to 1 in front of you, and this thing is turned, and you're incapable of pulling the trigger, you better learn to put in a profit floor somewhere. Half the move something. What was the key that you saw to take this trade? You know what, Al? I don't want to focus on it too much, but it's the poke through the base, wash the stops, and then it's a small risk for me. As we move up, I'm willing to put money on the table. But there's a nice trade coming over here, Al, which is repeatable. BJ says, I used to give all this back all the time. Now... I'm guessing BJ has learned to use, BJ and Pat used to learn to profit for. Okay, you can't give all this back. Even if you, the market's long and everybody's long. So, if you were, if you realize, oh crap, I missed the logical exit. Well, then put a profit floor underneath. Say, you know what, let's say 50%. I'll give back two and a half and I'll keep my two and a half to one. That's fine. But put, don't give it all back. Just don't. And don't think that you're going to hit at the market because you will freeze. Trust me. And it'll hurt your mental stride. Absolutely true. So when we're planning our trades, it's important to look for where the crowd will be looking for. Two-dimensional. Absolutely true, Peter. What's the easy two-dimensional target? It's right here. This is where sellers are going to try and get in. So get the hell out. They may be wrong. It might go all the way to 1210, maybe even further. But they may be wrong, but they're going to be there. So you know what? That's five to one. Take your four, five or four and a half to one. Walk away. If they're right, God bless them. But if they're if they, I mean, if they're wrong, God bless them. If they're if they're right, you're safe, and you've got your four and a half five locked up. And that's where you guys need to be playing right now. High probability entries, high probability exits. Now, this is not an entry I expect you to have, but remember that when we do find a high probability entry. 
So now I've stacked up three go no goes for you. Two bucks, two and a half bucks, three bucks. Okay? Look at the ATR. We're running just below two. So for me, two is a little close. Two and a half is possible, but I would probably be using three dollars. You could go out to four if you want. That depends on you, but okay. So I'm going to use Amanda. Are you with me, Amanda? It's ten dollars per tick. All right, so Amanda. If price pulls back and you're supposed to and you're stopped out of break even, you won't be in the right frame of mind to take an entry if it pulls back. That's absolutely true, Ouija. You'll be devastated. You'll be screwed. You know, and it'll take a while to get unscrewed. All right, so Amanda, here we go. You said if price pulls back, is there an opportunity? And where would I be interested in getting long? I want you to take a look at this chart and tell me if price pulls back. Where is it likely that an opportunity will form? You don't have to be surgical. You don't even have to be right. I want I want you to look at it. Where is it likely or where can I afford to get in? Same question. Well, the only one that matters is where can I afford to get, a lot, get in, isn't it, Amanda? So what would you do? Think of what she just asked. Where is it likely or where can I afford to get in? The answer is it only matters where you can afford to get in. So you got to place a go no go and where would you place it? Where's the game over? So three ticks below the last low. Okay. So you and I are going to use three bucks, okay? And we're going to go three ticks underneath. And that's our opportunity zone right there. I know we're all the way up here, and that seems like it's forever away. But you can place your orders right now. It's also the best trade location area, so the most logical. Okay, Amanda, do you see it? See what I'm saying? You could draw a fork if you want to, sure. Now, I don't know in terms of time or space in this case, I don't know if it's going to form here or here or here or here, but I know this is what I, at the moment, this is what I got to afford. Now, maybe I can change that if mature structure shows up, but right now, this is what I can afford. Is that correct? So I'm going to go under that assumption. I'm going to put this on my chart right now. I'm not going to wait until it pulls back. I'm going to put it in right now. Can I ask, do you see fresh buyers? You don't think this vertical is fresh buyers, Weech? We made a new low, and we've come straight out of the hole. I think those are fresh buyers, fresh, aggressive buyers. Now, in order to get down here, they're going to get washed out, aren't they? which actually is what I want. I don't really want everybody to be long. So the, these early birds, if they didn't take their profit, the worm, so to speak, they're going to get killed. They're going to be right, but they're going to get killed if we're correct. So we can afford this. You can put it on your chart, and if you want to, you can put the order in right now. And I know none of you are thinking that way, but you might want to rethink how you deal with opportunity and structure. If price comes back down here, this is what you can afford, and this makes logical sense. Anybody have a problem with that? That's really interesting to hear you say that, Tim. I would never plan that far in advance. Oh, I know you wouldn't, Robbie. Almost nobody does, but I want you to rethink what you're thinking. You don't have to put the order in right now. The other thing you can do is on most of your platforms, you can park it. In other words, you can draw them up and say, okay, I'd enter, I'd enter here. Here'd be my stop loss. They're not active and have them ready to go. 
but you don't have to start doing it over you know when price is right here now you're typing up the order because you need both sides then this thing is swinging at w one minute per bar you know would Mr. Whale be looking to push hard to get the washes? Maybe. You can't worry about him, Peter. If he's going to... Look, if, if you're guppies and he's eating, you're going to get eaten. That's the nature of trading. Get used to being wrong. You're going to be wrong some portion of the time. We can only work to get that up to a respectable... And by respectable, I mean 40% or higher. Okay? That's all we have to do. There are going to be times when you're going to get washed. There are, there are going to be times when this is going to be a swing down that takes out the low and keeps right on going. That's okay. Because our risk-reward ratios mean we only have to be right about 40% of the time. Okay. So I prepare the order but watch the bar action. That's fine, Perry. That's fine. But you should be preparing it right now, Perry. Not over here. If you, if you can see the opportunity. Amanda told me about this opportunity like when we were here. I'm waiting for it to pull back. All right, so if she thinks that, then she should actually be putting in the go no go that she's willing to use. Follow me? She can even do it before price turns. Why wait? Like the prior examples, I feel the swing up broke out of orbit. Okay, so Ouija says it's broken out of orbit. It's not coming down. Okay, if you don't see it, then you don't see it. Amanda's waiting for the pullback, and this is what she's gonna, she's gonna says she can afford. Let's see how it plays out. Okay, here's a visual observation. I'm gonna step away for about 90 seconds. I want you to think about this: original slope, the slope gentles horizontal now the slope starts to head up I want you to look at that and I want you to think about how that plays into your thoughts okay and I'll be right back think about it Sorry about that. Thank you. All right. So, 
Amanda says, this happened yesterday, but I did not have the order on as price came into my target area, and I wanted to watch price hit it and see all within a few seconds. I missed the trade when I put the order on a minute later. Price had left the area and never came back to give me a second opportunity. It comes down to whether or not you believe what you're doing, Amanda. And that's what we've been talking about for the last three or four sessions, and we're continuing today. Aaron says, uh, yes, P Petra, apparently... You didn't hear me excuse myself. Sorry about that. Um, Aaron, I was wondering if a, a line of max excursion from the bottom two pivots would work for timing, but it seems too steep. Um, yep. Can you cop? No, I'm not going to draw. You're going to, you're stuck with what I'm drawing. I started to draw and then, you know, it's, we'll be here for five hours. I, I have an agenda. Let's follow my agenda instead. Okay. So these are tangents drawn on a circle okay and the in between is the probable path of price does everybody understand that so here we are with a steep steep tangent here's a less steep tangent as we come down the circle here we are at horizontal and here we are at heading up, and these are the probable paths of price. If you think the spiral has changed, we've gone to horizontal, and we're now opening up to the upside, as we did over here, what does that tell you about, look at, look at the railroad tracks, if you will, of the probable paths of price, okay? What does that tell you about where the opportunity should be horizontally? Is the is the opportunity going to be lower at the same or higher? It should be higher. And pr probably not significantly higher, but higher, okay? So that also plays into your choice of go-no goals because you've got to buy three ticks under here, right? But if you get cheap and you use just two bucks, take a look. You're asking an awful lot because you expect this market to make a higher low See the conundrum there? I'm all into using, you know, only paying as much as you have to pay. But by the same token, you're asking the market to almost fill the mountain again. And we know that it probably should be a slightly higher low. So you might get it, but you really are not giving yourself much room for the opportunity. So it's a balancing act. That's why I'm at two or three dollars, not two dollars. You with me? All right. So whether you park the opportunity, you know, the, the uh, orders on your computer, or whether you put the orders in, you need to be ready. Literally at this point, Amanda was actually talking about the opportunity as we were over here. If she was, then she should have these at least parked on her computer. And especially once it extends past this size, the spiral is widening. Okay. Let's see what we get. We test the top, fail, test the top, make a new high. So, crap, not what I want to do. So now, not only are we gentling, now we're even breaking our upsloping top. Do you see that?
Okay. At this point, you have to expect a return somewhere near the lows and an opportunity. Or you don't get it. This is the nature of motion. As we take out these lows, price has a high likelihood to come down somewhere in this area. Not necessarily this low. Not necessarily the mountain low, but somewhere in here, prices, I mean, and it may make new lows, but in which case you're just wrong. But it's likely to swing into this area. Does everybody see that? That's the destiny of this swing. That's what it's, hang on one second here. You guys can all say, hi, Jeannie. Happy anniversary. See you later. Okay, she's all embarrassed now. <laughs> anyway, um, you should see this pullback. She's gone now. 32 years. Can you believe she put up with me for 32 years? All right. Well, as we take out this low, Yes, she is a saint. You should expect somewhere down here there's going to be an opportunity. Okay? So I've been married longer than I've not been married. That's that's pretty incredible, actually, when you think about it. So you can see my order's in already. And Amanda, you're exactly, you're, what, what we talked about is exactly what I thought. What can I afford? And how much do I need on the upside to make it likely that I'll get filled? If I only use this, for example, am I likely to get filled? If I only use this amount, am I likely? To, I find it strange you did not mark alternating pivots here. I guess you're trying to drag us somewhere else. That's right, Ouija, I don't want to focus on it. I purposely do not want to focus on alternating pivots. I want you to pay attention to the swings in a different way, and I want you to think just about the opportunity. That's all. And it worked? Okay, good. I, I, I want you to think about things differently. Okay. So my, Amanda... I, I marked out the territory that I can afford. And if it goes more than three ticks through the prior low, I know that I've failed. Just just kill me. Just take take the money. That's fine. I get it. You with me, Amanda? Okay. Amanda says yes. She agrees. Okay. So watch. At some point here, you can't type fast enough. I'm filled. So let's look. If you're, if you're looking to watch the action, I know Amanda said it and a couple other people said, I want to watch the action. Okay, let's look at this. Let's play the I'm going to watch the action game. Are you, are you with me? We don't like this action, do you? Bar's closing on its low. This sucks, right? I'm judging it by the action. Oh, it's closing on its low. I'm not going to. I'm not going to trade that. As you're walking through this scenario, I noticed I was looking for a short. About midway through, I realized the nature of my thinking versus thinking about opportunity. The question, where is the opportunity, is far more flexible than do you see long or short. That's absolutely true. Although, you might have seen a short opportunity here, and you might be in the taking your profit mode now, Masao. I don't really see that, but I could imagine that you somebody might see horizontal here. This is the last photon, etc. But, you know, 
The old falling knife fear is creeping in, says Timmy. I get that. Okay. Next buyer want to see price slowing to 43 miles per hour, says Amanda. Okay. Balls of steel to catch a falling knife. Well, not if you trust your lines. Right, Al? Speeding up should be part of the logic now if the low holds, says John. Okay. So let's see. So this bar doesn't do it for you. If I'm watching the action, this, this certainly doesn't make me any better. If you're looking to buy it, then it's counterintuitive to watch it come down as that is catching a falling knife and fear that it'll, yeah, that's exactly right. So watching really doesn't help. Ah, Carlos says, trust the whales. And they're likely to buy in this area. And, and in essence, Carlos, you know this, in essence, I'm teaching you, I mean, you're looking through a whale's eyes. I'm one of the largest traders in the world. You're looking through a whale's eyes. So I'm teaching you to trade and think like I treat, like I, like I trade, predatory. Okay? Concern would be third time back to the well. I don't see the third time. Here's the really aggressive trade that I don't expect anybody to take. This is the first real opportunity as far as I'm concerned. This this bar and this bar are really boom, boom, okay? I can catch this a lot of the times. This one, good luck with that. One out of ten, so I don't even bother. But for the majority of the market, you, you don't even see this one. Let me explain it to you this way, Timmy. You don't even see this one coming, do you? Before I explained it today, as this bar forms, you don't even see this coming, do you? In general, I think this would be the way to get in on fast time frame charts, right, although I don't trade them. Ouija, I did mentoring yesterday with a gentleman in London who was trading stocks on a daily. Is that correct, sir? You know, you know who I'm talking to. I'll name you in a second. Keith, am I lying? Okay, so we talked about this yesterday. If you're in the right area, he's trading stocks, daily stocks, and he's got his order in. And his question was, as he's got an order in and he's getting filled here, am I trading too early? And the answer is, if you get filled and you don't get stopped out X amount of time. The answer is no, you're not trading too early. I know this bar sucks. I get that. But it's all about opportunity. It's not about the illusion of what this bar is. Remember, this bar is a computer. You've told this computer to print it out at X amount of ticks or X amount of time, right? It's a slice in time or a slice in space. So you're being spoofed you might even be being manipulated by a whale. And Amanda said, look at the turn on the first entry. Yeah. So the real question is not how does the bar look. The real question is, is this an area where an opportunity is going to form? That bar was negative. So, OK. Is the reason for getting in so early that if we wait for another bar for confirmation, we may miss a lot of these opportunities? Yeah, watch, Robbie. So the question is, what's the area look like? Not what's this bar look like. How far can the whale push without tipping it over? Well, that's always a good question, John. You can make it collapse on yourself. Now, I, th I think this is just the market do its its thing. This is just... The early buyers getting washed out. Okay? I don't really think this is being pushed. I think this is, oh crap, my profit's getting away from me. And the smart people here would have a profit stop right around here, wouldn't they? Well, when those profit stops get run, look what happens to price. I mean, it pushes it lower. That's the nature of of orders getting filled, right? All we want to do, if we, if Amanda and I think this is an opportunity area, 
go ahead, let the stops get run. I don't really care what the bar print looks like. I care about if it gets into an opportunity area that I can afford. I don't care if it closes on its lower or its high. All I care about is it fills me. You with me? Does this sound different than what I teach them in the midday sessions or write in an article? Yes. Am I going to teach this to the general public? No, they'll kill themselves. But look how much time we've spent to get here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach you to look through a whale's eyes. And I've said this before, you don't have to be a whale to trade with me. You can trade this way. But it's not about the bar, it's about the opportunity. Okay? Now, this bar is not that comforting either, is it? All right, so Matt says when I see this bar, now I'm going to put my order in. Okay, Matt, let's see how that works for you. That's as much as you can afford right there. You with me? So Mandy says it's slowing. Matt says, boy, okay, now that I see this bar, I'm in. I'll put my order in, okay? He's not filled, but he's got his order in. You guys all with me? So even if you're quick enough to look at this next bar and say, you know what, that's a comfort bar. I don't think most of you feel that this, how many people, be honest, are comforted by this bar? Enough to put your order in. Before we had this discussion today, Amanda, I know you are because you were talking about getting long over here. Just looks like another bar in the cascade down, says Ouija. Keith says, I am. I know you are, Keith, because we went over your trade yesterday. No, it's got to close in the middle. Nope, I'm not. Sorry. just about, No, I want you to be honest. And I understand it's not a comfort bar. And I understand that almost all of you looking at the bars are not comfortable. I get that. That's why I'm pushing you to the left, right? This would be a thinking procrastination bar. Okay, this would be a let me buy another bar, wouldn't it? For the most part, this would be, okay, now I need to see another bar. But even if you're aggressive, like Matt Cube says, you know, I get it this time. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But let's say that Matt wants to buy right here now. That's all we can afford is right here, right? So on this bar, Matt's decided that it works for him. Are you with me? How many people think that's aggressive? Carlos says Matt has decided to hit the fastball. Okay, so most people think this is aggressive. All right, so let's take let's let's take let's take a look and see what happens. You didn't want to buy this bar, you could have. Didn't want to buy this bar, you could have. I think it's aggressive. You give us good logic. I don't want. I'm not talking about what I've just taught you here today. I'm talking about in general in your trading. Does this seem aggressive? That's what I want to know. Looking at these bars, I'm going to say almost everybody here thinks, "Oh my God, I'm not. I'm not putting my order in yet. I'm not getting long here." All right, but let's. Okay, Robbie says, oh, definitely if we didn't do the teach today. That's what I'm trying to get at. All right, so now I want I want everybody to be put in Matt Cube's shoes. Peter says, looks like the world's coming to an end. Okay, so thank you, Jesus, I believe. I want you all there, okay? Uh, don't know who the, Don't know who that is, but go away. All right, so now let's watch. The order's in. Next bar. Okay, if you were ultra-aggressive, you would have gotten filled. This might be, I would say this is the first bar where any of you might even distinctly start, not any of you, but all in about two or three of you. Everybody else, this is the first time where you might even begin to sniff along. Make sense? Okay. So now you put your order in again at the same place. See it? Because you can't afford anything lower. Okay. Let's see what happens.
Nope. Oh, you did get filled. Okay, cool. So there is hope. This trade is the same as this trade, isn't it? But John says now it looks like a new low is going to be formed. So you might have put the order in at this point, or you might be looking at it saying this is still in the cascade down. I can talk you out of this trade, can I? <laughs> Ouija says you can easily talk me out of this trade. I can easily see this trade going, look at it, down, consolidate, down, consolidate, down, right? Shane says that's why you need a trade plan. All right. Did we examine our risk reward for entering? Okay. Let's do a simple. What's the, what's the simple, Peter, what's the simple upside target? Okay, so let's just go here. You're risking 300 to make 1,000. It's 3.5 to 1, even there. Hey, Jordan, how are you? Okay, good morning. Okay. So the risk-reward is there. Now, let's see what we get. How many are, are, are now thinking about maybe it's going horizontal? You're not in. Be, be honest. We haven't talked today. Maybe it's going horizontal here. You see this bar. Okay. So most of you probably are now starting to think about horizontal and maybe looks like a beautiful 43 mile per hour area okay and maybe I'll put an order in here somewhere to get long when it closes up here so maybe it's leaving a higher low okay well you can draw a meaning line or anything you want the problem is this You got problems in Houston, as they say. Houston, I have a problem. So we've got a line of maximum excursion down here. And we got a problem that we've been talking about, which is let's assume that I can push you to the left so that you're not thinking about entering after this bar right here. Because this is where most of you are at. You see this bar, and you start to think about horizontal, and you're putting orders in on a median line over here, etc. I'll draw it. In fact, I will draw this. Most of you are here. Not a bad thing or a good thing. It's a thing. You see this bar, and now you start thinking about maybe a test or retest or whatever, okay? Make sense? Do you think that's a fair assessment? Am I cheating anybody here? Yeah, I know a couple of you are a little bit to the left, but I think that's a fair assessment. And and I'm glad that I got you here. Okay? And you can be extremely profitable if you just think about trading here and don't mind the ones that you miss. Okay? Believe me, you, if you just trade in this area and don't don't worry about anything else, if you're patient, 
and know yourself, you can make plenty of money. However, we're always trying to improve ourselves. If I can move you over here to the left, I don't want to move you to this trade. I don't. We'll talk about this trade in depth, certainly in September. And we'll see how far we can push to the left as the months roll on. Right now, if I can get you to this area, I'll be a happy professor, okay? And I've got some people over here already. And more of you will join the group. All right. But the question remains, if we're going to get in here, now, again, I consider this, this is whale territory, okay? You're trading with the whales now. And there's only three or four people in the mar in this entire market that can pull off this entry. So don't worry about getting in here. But grabbing it here as it's coming down vertically versus grabbing it after it's turned is whale territory. You're going to be swimming with the whales, okay? But that doesn't mean that every trade you have to think about hitting it out of the park. That's the illusion, unfortunately, that gets attached to this. You know what? I'm getting taught by a guy that's, you know, one of the biggest traders in the world, and I see a lot of his trades are 10 to 1, 11 to 1, 12 to 1. I have to be looking for that. No, what you need to be looked at is consistently profitable trades. Okay? We'll stretch out your profit targets later. First, we need you to find your entries, whether it's over here or whether I can push you to the left and then find logical repeatable high probability exits if I push you over to here and I can't get you to take logical profit targets there's no point is there it's a waste of everybody's time so you have to work on your middle game, which is boxing and profits when you can. And when you can't, your other option is your profit target has to make sense. So let's take a look at this rascal and say, OK, what makes sense? One possibility. When I put effort into finding these entries, I feel like I get whipsawed. I'll need to go over my records to see if that's actually the case. Okay, Maceo, you go over your you go over your entries, and if you can find these entries that you think are very close to the bone, and you get whipsawed, send me three, four, five, eight, ten examples, and I'll summarize them. I'll use them in a session. We'll go over them. And I'll show you that you're either entering the wrong spot or I'll show you whether you're being pushed too far to the left or right and how to fix it. It's easy if you can go through and find consistency in what you're doing. Okay? If you're just impulse trading, the answer is you're just impulse trading. But if you're doing something consistently and you're having problems, Keith and I talked about this yesterday. His answer was not that I was getting that he was getting stopped out, but that he saw that there were perhaps slightly better entries in the same area, and should we fine-tune them? And my answer is, hey, if you're not getting stopped out, don't mess with a good thing. So if I can get you over to the left and you're not getting stopped out, that's all I care about. It doesn't matter if you're getting filled here versus here. These are the same trades. So put some effort into a sale. If you got something for me to look at, I'll look at it. All right. So now we need to talk about logical exits, high probability exits. You with me? Now I'm fine if you just want to take your profit here. I'm fine with that.
I've got a line of maximum excursion. It's also the bottom of an action reaction set right here. See it? You can take profits here. You can go to the prior pivot and take this same frequency and extend it. Now, if you're shooting for the moon, and God knows you've seen me shoot for the moon, you can go to the prior major high. You can go to this high as well, 1210. That's another one, which we'll talk about in a second. But you can go to that prior high, and you can also use the slope and say, okay, when this thing really comes apart to the upside, when the spiral really unfolds, that's the ultimate target, okay? Now, here's my question. Let's go, let's go in descending order. Does it make sense for you to get in here and shoot for this slope line up here, which is about a 22 to 1? It might go there, but does it make sense for you to plan that? No. If you want to trade that, the only way you can trade that is to say, you know what, I'm, I think that could be the ultimate target, and if I get market structure, I'll try and follow it up. But even then, it's not going to happen very often. It's only going to happen. You're only going to get to there without getting profit stopped out. Two out of ten times, something like that. So those trades happen because they happen. They don't happen because you're planning them, so to speak. All right. How about this mirror of this action line? Keith says, I like that, and I think it's logical. Matt Cube says, I like that, okay? If if my account was way up, but if I'm trying to get profitable, then no, I would, have, I would go with a higher high. Well, Amanda, I'm going to tell you this. As profitable as I am, when I go back and I'm honest, go through all my work, the majority of my profits are made by taking logical, repeatable profit targets. And I do get those big winners. But unless it's a year where I've pushed gold down 500 bucks with a massive amount of money, it, it's those smaller trades add up to the, more than the bigger ones. Ouija says, I'm looking at the prior high at 12, 10, 16. Okay, so how many people like this as a profit target? All right. And by the way, Ouija, is it impossible that this profit target is the same as this profit target by the time it plays out? Yeah, we might be in the same area. All right. How many people want to go, you know what, screw it. I just want my money at 12.03. Give me the three and a half to one. No one. Okay. Matt Cube says, I don't I don't spit on three to one. Peter says, okay, that is me. Okay, so Peter Peter wants his money. Okay, cool. All right. Robbie says, and I'm gonna let's follow up on this. Robbie says, I think it's got to take out the prior high. Well, think about it this way. Now let's follow through what we know about price action. Are you ready? And then we'll unfold this. Lower high, lower high, break the high, break the high, and even much more important, bigger swings. Pull back to a higher low. Now follow me here. Pull back to a higher low, and I know 
if this pattern continues that my swing is going to be bigger than this. Look at the... Does that make sense? This is the second drive, yeah. It's not three to one, but it looks like we caught a low, and I don't want to get into the habit of jumping out because it jitters. Okay. How many of you planned your trades like this? How many of you think about the exits? Okay. I know you don't think about the entries as logical in, in as depth as this, but you're going to learn to. But I want you to get as detailed on the exits as well. Absolutely, Keith, you're absolutely right. Some trades have more obvious targets than others. Absolutely true. But I also don't want you to overstay your welcome. And you'll see what that means in this trade. As I, I said at the beginning, when you watch the tape again, this trade has a conundrum in it, okay? There's a pot of gold, and there's a pot of silver, okay? And the question is, it, you have to ask yourself, is, the, is it worth it? Is what you have to go through to get the pot of gold worth it, or was the pot of silver the real target, okay? You ready? I don't remember ever seeing you do this. Well, yeah, I, Robbie. Hopefully, I do new th do th do 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 new things. But you can anchor the action reaction line to the prior high, which is forward from where you've trained it. Yeah, you can. Sure, you can anchor it anywhere you want. All right. Yeah, this is a different session, and hopefully, you guys are liking it. Perry likes it. All right. All right. So I'm expecting an expansion. You've seen it expand until it stops expanding. I expect an expansion. Does that make sense? All right, so let me get this out of the way. Let's see what price does. Whether you're in here or whether you're in here or whether you're in here, you're long now, okay? Put yourself in that mindset. Think about where you want to get out. I don't care where the group wants to get out. Okay, Amanda says, I want to get out at the end of that expansion, 12.06. Okay, Amanda's got an order in the market at 12.06 right now. She was she had her entry order in early. She's got her exit order in right now at 12.06, okay? Now, you all should think about where you want to get out, whether it's here, whether it's here, whether it's all the way up there, whether it's at 12.10. I want you to put yourself in that mindset. Pick it out. Now, not as price unfolds. And Amanda says as we approach this high, she's going to break even. I think that makes logical sense. You're, th you're at 3 to 1, and if it's going to fail, it's going to fail right there, right? So, good thoughts. All right. And that's the middle game. Right? Battle of the Whales will close the valley, says Carlos. I like that. So if somebody's going to step up and try and stop this thing, it's going to be right here. So right as we get close to here and start to slow down, as the market speeds up, we want to slow down and say, okay, look, if it's going to fail, it's going to fail right here. So let me go to break even. And if it takes this out, where's my logical profit? Okay? All right. Right now, see this bar? Every one of us is doing the happy dance, right? Oh, yeah, we got them. Oh, yeah, we got them. But every one of us should also be going to break even right now. Sure, looks great. But just in case, let me just go to break even. I trust that you're all going to continue to buy, but just in case you don't, let me go to break even. Follow me? And there's a point where we may be doing the happy dance where we say, you know what, 
well, I'm not at my profit target, but I need to trail something, whether it's under structure or whether it's a profit stop. And we'll just put it over here to remind ourselves. It's not. This is not meant to be a price. We'll drag it at some point. Okay. All right. So, hooray! We won. Okay. Somebody got out at twelve oh three. Good. Congratulations. Three and a half to one. You should be ecstatic. You should not, if it goes another cent, you shouldn't care. You got your money, that's your bit, be happy. Do it again, and again, and again, and again, and you'll make a fortune, okay? If that's your repeatable trade, repeat it. Because what you caught is, you caught price slowing down, and you caught where price goes. Keith and I talked about this yesterday. You caught as price slowed down, you got your entry, and now you're catching it as price goes parabolic. Does everybody understand what that means? And if your ability is to catch this low and then see this swing, but then your weakness is what to do over here, then when it goes parabolic and you get to the first probable target, take your money and then do it again. Catch it again. And when it goes parabolic, take your money. And when it goes parabolic, take your money. And when it goes over and over and over again, that's your trade. If that's what you can see and you're weak over here to the right, Then practice cashing the checks. How about that? Think about it that way. Instead of, I'm not very good at it, and I get profit stopped out here, I get stopped out of break even after over and over and over. No, I absolutely would not take half off. Taking half off ruins your risk reward. There's only one time I take half off that's in a bond corner trade that's a specific, and I know I'm ruining my risk reward, but I'm doing that because I know one out of eight times I'm going to get $1,000 or more, so I'm willing to do it. But otherwise, statistically, I've never found a case where taking multiple, you know, having multiple profit targets did anything other than ruin your risk reward. And the risk reward is what is going to make you a profitable trader. And everybody's going to tell you, take half off and let the rest run. You know what? They're losers. The, with this price action, it's very difficult to move from break even. I agree, Al. And I don't think it's time to do this. I mean, maybe here. If you need to learn, you know, if you need to build some confidence and have some winners, maybe here, because you can see it pause, and then it goes vertical. So that's not an awful thought. That's more than two to one, okay? But I'm not in a hurry. Okay, we're happy. It's closing on a tie. It's closing on a tie. Now, uh, now, Amanda, you are no, you're still on out. At this point, you're two thirds of the way or more to 1210 and we have no structure other than right here right I actually didn't want to go this long this day but this is really an important discussion but you risked 300 to make 1500 so you're at 5 to 1 right now Amanda's out of 1206 sorry so Amanda's got her money okay you're at 5 to 1 now I know you're enjoying it, but let me ask you a question. How are you going to feel if this thing stops you out of break even? Well, I don't want you to feel like a loser, but not good is the answer. Pissed off? Okay, I get that. No, that's okay. I get it. If we're well past your three to one, foolish and not taking some cash out. Well, you know what? Then start 
start practicing safe trading. I'd love to have the 5 to 1, but if my profit target is here or here or higher, you know what? Protect yourself. Put in a profit floor. Keep that 2.5 to 1. Okay, two to one. With me? Are you saying mark it out? No, I'm saying put in a profit order. Put in a stop profit at 11.98 and change, Timmy. Once it extends itself up here, you've gone to break even. Now it's extending itself. Now lock in some profit underneath. Okay, Shane's got it. At this point, dynamic risk reward is so skewed, you would be giving up five stops for one extra stop. Take a look and see what Shane's got it exactly. Okay, if your profit target is here, this is what you're willing to make, or this is what you're trying to make, okay? I guess I'm not going to get it right, but until I do this. This is what you're trying to make. Look what you're giving up. If you put nothing, if you put, if you don't go anywhere else, look how much you're willing to give up. Does that make sense? Great point, Shane. I was try. I'm, I'm going to get there. I was going to get there in, later on, but there's no reason not to do exactly the same for the same reason right here. BJ and Pat says, I used to do this all the time and get angry. So instead, how about a profit stop somewhere? So you know what? And again, I don't recommend it up in here. Okay? Just put it under the last pause. At this point, you might as well trail with eight, with average true range plus three. Uh, you can do that if you want, but you better do something. Don't let five to one turn into nothing. Okay, that's just crazy. It's not worth your time. Okay, so let's see what happens. If you were looking for this reflected slope. Congratulations, you got out of 1208. That's great. Be happy. Given the verticality, absolutely. We pause. And BJ say, I'd, I'd be out at this point. Okay, so we're pausing. Okay, if you wanted out at 1210 at the prior highs, congratulations. Now you got six and a half to one. That's great. Okay, you protected yourself down here. If you got really nervous, you might even move here at that point. But you're out of 12.10, right? That's great. Magnificent trade. Okay, now let's watch for the conundrum. How many of you think that you probably should be out of this trade at this point? Actually, how many how many of you think you should be out of the trade at this point? How many of you think the high is in is in? And how how many don't care? But no, yeah, you're not sure, right? All right, so Amanda says. Well, you're already taking your profit, Amanda, but I'll give you a second shot at it since you've done so well. Amanda says, let me put my profit stop under this poke right before we went vertical again. Peter says, you're not two times the range yet, but I'm out. Okay. Not sure, but I think higher. Well, here's the problem is you're not sure, right? I'm expecting a pullback before a new high, says Robbie. Okay. All right, so let's see what we get. Take the profit, clear the mind to look for another entry. That's 
a great piece of advice, Keith. I have no idea who gave it to you, but that's a great piece of advice. All right, let's watch the conundrum for him, okay? Here we go. You're a whale. You think this thing has got significant movement to the upside because the swings are expanding, okay? With me? So you're looking for a significant move higher. Here's my question. Let's call this area. No, let me move it back up. Anywhere in here, the pot of silver. Okay? Actually, we'll even make it if I can grab it. Yeah. We'll even make this one silver. There's the pot of silver, okay? But isn't this swing already expanded relative to others? Absolutely, sure. But, Shane, remember, you can always box in profits and look for the next expansion, which might be even bigger, right? Or at least that's the, think that's the thinking. Okay, so that's the conundrum. Do you want the silver, the pile of silver? Or you think you can see the gold, do you want to trade for the gold? There's a problem in this thinking if you want to trade for the gold, which is so far you don't have a stop, do you? As defined by swings. You could put in a profit floor, but you don't have a stop. Meaning underneath structure. Does everybody understand that? This thing's gone vertical. It's got to find a low. Now it's going to have to look for a low. It's either got to, or it could go, of course, more vertical, but at some point, it's going to have to look for a low, or you're not never going to have a stop. Okay, so we top out at 12, 11, and change. And now we go into a torturous sideways move. Can you see that this is easy money? Anywhere in here is easy money. That's where price goes parabolic. Now price has to restore energy. Now you're into the next day. E. And now you're still looking for a bottom. Can you see it? It's eating up your focus. It's eating up your, you know, your capital is at risk longer. And you could have had you could have been out and doing something else and or returning to this commodity later. You're being dragged behind the bus. All right. Is that a harmonic coil now? Uh, it's a pretty sloppy one, but yeah, kind of. It's really, it, it's, it's really just, I mean, if I close it up, I guess maybe. So you're still looking for the bottom. It hasn't made a bottom yet, has it? We haven't taken out one swing to the upside yet. We haven't done anything other than pull back. Now, if you're playing this game at home, and many of you do, at some point in here, you're going to get tired and just get out of the trade, aren't you? You're seeing it eat. You, 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 I, I would be eating my young at this point, says Matt Cube. Yeah, I mean... At some point, you're going to get tired, and you're going to hit the exit, right? Boy, if you were hanging on to the hanging on, the doubts would be huge. Where or oh, where is my bottom, right? I have now given back half of the profits. It's such an emotional grind to see to see through all this. Yeah. And I mean, when you see this, it's, oh, it's, oh my God, what am I doing? What am I doing? Right? O 
Okay, we take out our first swing. You're looking for another entry to get in, says BJ. So BJ and Pat are out. Now they're looking for an entry. Okay, so here's the problem. Look at the vertical nature once it makes its... We're making new highs now, by the way, very quickly. Okay, so now it, it grinds you up here. There's no way in. And now it's making new highs. So here's the conundrum. <coughs> yeah, the move down was gentle. Here's the conundrum. As a whale, do you want to take the silver? Or can you actually sit through the acid bath, so to speak? And I'm going to tell you, this is not a pleasant thing. And my advice to all of you is, if you can catch the parabolic move, that first move, take your money at a high probability logical profit target and disengage. If it doesn't, and then if you want to come back and look, if there's an entry, that's fine. But if there's not, don't worry about it when it does this. Amanda says an acid bath would be more tolerable when it's consistently profitable. That's true. And when you're trading for, you know, return on capital, unfortunately, this is some of the things that you do have to trade. You have to actually squeeze out the majority of a move. And the reason why is because there aren't that many things to trade in markets that are deep enough. But you guys don't have to worry about that. So if you can grab this and not sit through this, I suggest you think very carefully when you get to this point about what you're looking for and the dynamic risk reward because why why sit through all this and why risk half the money is it easier to do this other people's money oh it's harder peter because you got them calling you on the phone all day long there are very few people that don't get bothered by their investors i'm one of them but almost everybody that manages money all they get is what are we doing today how's it going today are we still in that gold trade that we were in yesterday and how's that working out instead of you know leave me alone i'm trading you nibbled to death by the ducks yeah okay so bj pat are they wanted an entry but there's none here and now we're making new highs so here's the conundrum let's watch look at it get steeper and steeper and steeper there just ain't no entry now Action, reaction, see it? Maximum excursion line giving you timing, see it? Okay, do you want the pot of silver or do you want the pot of gold? Yeah, gold is good, but I got to tell you, Matt, really? You want to sit through all this? Really? Really? Yeah, Keith says everything is great in hindsight. How would you feel about not taking your profit here as price is coming down to here for anybody that was talking about gold? Sucks to be you. Sure, it's great up here. But when we're down here, it sucks. So here's the conundrum, okay? I want the pot of gold without the pullback. Okay, I get that, Maceo. I And you know what? And it, it, I don't mean it as a joke. I, everybody, including me, wants the pot of gold without the pullback. But take the silver until you get better at, at taking the gold. I, there, That's a perfect. From your lips to God, BJ and Pat. Take the silver until you get better at taking the gold. Your job right now, my job is to push your entries this way so that you don't have entries here when the pullback, logical pullback is here. My job is to push you to the left and get into this area. I don't care about getting you over here. Your job is if you catch it and price goes parabolic, 
Your job is taking your money at a repeatable logical pattern and missing this. Okay? Especially when the easy money was made in the afternoon, but the next morning grind down would have tested the stamina of most speculators. Good, good comment, Shane. So this was the same thing, the risk-reward. Look how much you risked to get this. It's, it's really not very good risk-reward. Overall, the trade has great risk-reward, but look at it this way. It's got to be underneath for a stop. There's our risk. And here's our reward. Not even that high. It's suckier than I thought. Now take a look. Here's the money that you put at risk. And here's your reward. How about that? BJ Pat said, I did not like taking the silver, and it took me an extra year to figure that part out. Yeah. So look, the gold looks great, but look what you put at risk to get that extra bit. It's not even one-to-one. -one. Now, we at one point, we started to talk about dynamic risk-reward in the midday sessions of the market. We're calling them market maps now, but it didn't go anywhere because, you know what, people just couldn't get their heads around it. But here's two real, go real good examples of why you need to be taking your money here because look how much you have at risk you're at break even. And even here, when it's clear that you want the gold, take a look. Does it make sense? It doesn't make any sense. Are hedge fund guys sometimes forced to trade for this? Yes, we are. Does it does it make any sense for you to trade for this? No, it does not. It makes sense for you to get in, grab the parabolic part, get out, find another trade. If there was another trade forming here and you could grab it, great. If there's not, okay, that's fine. But if you could reset, well, let me do it for you. If you could reset, and this was a fresh trade, go for it. But let's try and cut this section out. How many people learned something today? This is the clearest description of the phenomena you've shown yet. Good. You didn't learn anything, Peter? Oh, you, no. David, you did. Good. Oh, you did. Okay. You need to be here to advance and understand this. The breakfast session makes all the difference. I absolutely think that's true. Um, and your your brain is steaming. Okay. Well, you know what? Don't watch the recording until tomorrow. Let it cool off. This is probably one you're going to watch a few times. I like the swing analogy leading into the trade. Yep. I think it's just as important as the back end. Okay. All right. And I'll, I'll just, real quick, I'll squeeze it in for you, and we'll just finish out. This is what happened. So you can see, if you didn't take your profit there, you were back into the, right? Same crap. Peter, send me, uh, send me that symbol or a picture. I'd like to see it. Okay, so... Hopefully, when you review this, there's lots of lots of really interesting information in here. Um, I'm just going to recap for Al's sake. We need to come to closure here. If if you're still thinking about coming and you haven't said I'm coming, I need to know because Al and I have got to to have closure with this hotel right now. Al, and I need you to to double check that they actually expect me to give them a signed contract today because if they do there's a lot of open questions that they haven't answered and you know I want I'm, I'm ready to commit but they haven't answered the damn questions 
what are they talking about with audio visual what happens for people that are not coming on monday or uh, not coming until tuesday night for example i know i get that um i'm just trying to recap um what's the meeting room look like hey tim david jones and david oh, I, I know that oh you are on this two individuals okay Al, David Jones and David Carl Jones are the same person, and they're listed as two, just so we know. Um, what about people who stayed an extra night than Al booked? That's okay. Just drop me an email, and we'll work that out with them. That's fine. We've got Monday to Monday at that rate, Petra, so that's okay. So I don't think you're talking about staying longer than that, are you? You are? All right, drop me an email and tell me what day you're interested in coming. I'm sure they'll... Oh, you want to leave an extra day later? I think they're more jammed on the arrival than they are on the end. I'm leaving on Tuesday or Wednesday as well. So, Al, we'll ask if we can, if a few people want to leave on Tuesday. So, ah, okay, so more people are saying, actually, I want to leave on Tuesday as well. So, but is that Tuesday during the day or is that Tuesday night? See, Tuesday during the day is Monday night, which is what they're offering us. Monday to Monday. Yeah, that's what Kai's saying. You want to stay Tuesday night as well, Petra? All right, so then you're talking about Monday, Monday, which is exactly what they're offering us. Okay. Al, Al will go forth, and again, we all, are, we all, all owe him a dinner and drinks for doing this at least. And we'll get this straightened out, get it all booked, and... Um, as, as soon as we get things booked, I will put up a link for people that can pay the difference. Um, I'll, the link is already up. Oh, I have a link for the extra session, which is uh, Wednesday, Thursday. And depending on who comes, we'll tailor the material to that, so don't worry about that. Now, I'll put the link up for Wednesday, Thursday, but I wanted to make sure we had enough interest, and now it looks like we do, so... Um, I'll put that up, and I'll also put the, the, the next payment up as well. Or you can just pay the original $1,000 one twice. That's all right. So anyway. Oh, yeah, BJ and Pat, actually, I think I'm probably going to go back up uh, to your place during my free time. I love that area. Anyway, have a great weekend. God, thank God it's Friday. It's been a long week. Um, I hope this was interesting. We'll get everything else settled out al and i and uh, get information out to you guys and i will see everybody on monday but enjoy your long weekend and al thank you again i'll talk to you later on via email everybody take care enjoy your weekend